Hello everyone, welcome again in Engman YouTube channel. So in this video, by the way, this is a video series and this is the start of the series. And this series is about CO2 storage modeling using CMG software, right? So CMG is one of the most popular software for reservoir modeling and simulation. And I think it's quite powerful to be used for CO2 injection, CO2 storage simulation. Okay, so in the in this video series, we will learn about the modeling, CO2 storage modeling in this software. Okay, so we are now inside the CMG Technologies Launcher. And for the modeling, we will use this one, Builder. Okay, so I will open my Builder. It's like this. So you can follow me. We click new. Okay, for simulation of the CO2 storage, we will use Gem as the simulator. And working units, I prefer selecting standard international standard unit, SI, and then porosity, single porosity. But we can also use dual porosity, for example, if we have natural fractures, something like that. And then for the Simulation start date, let's say it's from the year 2000, month one, day one. So January 1st, 2000. Okay, so from here we click OK. And this is current reservoir simulator settings to be confirmed by us as the simulator. So yeah, click OK. You can check the simulator gem, working units SI, fractured no, single porosity, right? And simulation start date, January 1st, 2000. Okay, if you click OK, you cannot change. You cannot undo the setting. Okay, so the first step is very important. Make sure you select the correct choice. For example, the, the gem, the units that you prefer, whether or not you have fracture, something like that. Okay, so I will click OK. All right, so we will play with this. Okay, this is the window of the builder. As you can see, we have in this model tree view, IO control, input output control, reservoir settings, components, rock fluid, initial conditions, and then numerical settings, geomechanics, and wells and recurrent. Okay, we first start with IO control. Click this one. And you can name your case, for example, the title, let's say CO2 injection. That will be our title. Click OK. All right. So from here, we go to reservoir. By the way, I've discussed about the settings in other videos in this channel, in this playlist. So you can review my other videos to learn more about CMG. Okay, so from here we go to reservoir. Okay, click this button and then we will create grid. We start very simple with Cartesian grid. Okay, so it's like this. Grid type, yes, Cartesian and K direction down. So as we go down deeper and deeper, okay, the, the K values will increase. All right, so that's the meaning of K direction, whether up or down. And then number of grid blocks, I, I direction. I is actually X, okay, X direction. J is Y direction and K is Z direction. Okay, so for X or I, I prefer 100. And then for J, the width of the reservoir model is one. Okay, I want to make actually a two-dimensional view rather than three-dimensional model. Okay, so I prefer creating building 2D model rather than 3D model, okay? And hopefully we can expand the case by making the model, making the case more complex by going from 2D to of course, 3D, okay? And for K direction, the height of the reservoir, it's 20. 
and i direction block width 100 which is the numbers here 100 multiplied by 10 so the writing is like this okay so it's 100 times 10 meters okay and then j direction it's one multiplied by 10 so 10 yeah again i i select i prefer 10 and then control grid spacing no no need to tick this one so from here we click ok all right so the setting is like this yeah the created grids are like this you can scroll your mouse okay to change the view to change the scale all right and if we right click prop mode okay we can prop mode and then from that we go to specify properties by the way we are looking at ij to the areal okay two dimensional areal ij view or xy view you can also open the drop down menu and look at the ik or xz view it's like this okay and then of course jk view okay and 3d if you want okay it's like this you can count the number of grids 100 from the left to the right okay and then only one grid in j direction and then 20 grids in yeah the this one the k direction you can use this one pen reservoir to move around the model and you can also use this one rotate reservoir if you want to rotate okay so you see our grids are currently blank we need to populate the grids with data okay so from here i click this again from here we go to specify property this one specify property okay now we will have many properties that we can input our data into okay the first is grid top and you see the second is grid thickness and then porosity permeability i direction permeability j direction if you scroll to the right you can see many many parameters there you can also open this drop down menu and select the properties that you want okay so all right we will start from grid top okay i will select whole grid okay so this will represent the whole grid the numbers that i will input okay it will represent the whole grid all right and let's say sorry for the whole grid i will use for other properties for the grid top i will put my grid top the values in layer one so let's say the grid top is at 1200 in meters depth okay so this is the depth at the top the depth of our top reservoir and let's say grid thickness it's let's say five meters and i put in whole grid so all layers will have the same grid thickness of five meters and let's say porosity i want to have a homogeneous model for example 0 0.12 okay the porosity 0 0.12 and then we go to the next property i will put again in the whole grid to make the model homogeneous permeability in i direction 100 permeability in j direction also 100 let's make it simple okay and then permeability in k direction for example the same 100 course it's not usual 
because usually permeability in k direction is much lower much smaller than horizontal permeability okay permeability in k direction by the way is vertical permeability usually as a rule of thumb it's 10 percent of the horizontal permeability permeability horizontal permeability is permeability i and or permeability g usually we use the same value for permeability in i and j direction and we call them horizontal permeability permeability in k direction is a vertical permeability usually is only a fraction of horizontal permeability if you don't have data you can use a simple number a magic number a rule of thumb maybe 10 percent of the horizontal permeability but we will start simple start homogeneous model so i will maintain 100 for each of permeability i j and k direction okay and from from that we will not input values for net pay and others so from here we click ok and it's some confirmation sort of confirmation block corner value calculation so these are the six properties that we have populated the data so from here yeah refine blocks interpolate from contour map yes we select the default settings click ok all right now our grids have values now our grids have properties and currently we are looking at grid thickness we can also check other parameters that we have populated the data into the model and you can find the model you can find the properties by looking at this ball okay the ball means we have data there like grid top something like this grid thickness you can select okay the value is the same five and then you can also show porosity okay 0 0.1 homogeneous right okay we are looking at now the jk view okay jk view now it's ik view okay or ij view I think it's IK view, yeah. Or actually, we can also check this one IJ, IK, and then JK or 3D. Okay, and then, yeah, we can move like this. You can also check the permeability in I direction, still the same, the same color because it's homogeneous model. The value is here, the palette, 100 millidarcies, and then permeability in J direction, the same permeability in K direction, the same. Okay, and then here we are still in reservoir, by the way. In reservoir, we have grid, and you can see the thick one. So it means that we have populated this section with data and it's acceptable. You can open the drop down menu you'll find like this okay and then the array properties they are already good now you see this symbol it means that we need to input data into raw compressibility so i will open double click so raw compressibility let's be careful here we need to input pressure dependence of formation porosity or rock compressibility. The value is one per pressure or in this case one per kPa kilopascal. I will put 5.5 times 10 to the power of minus 7. Okay, one per kilopascal. And reference pressure for calculating the effect of compressibility, I will input 
800 kilopascal. And then we will maintain this one, pressure dependence of rock compressibility. Again, pressure dependence of rock compressibility. We can use these default numbers. Reference temperature for calculating the effect of rock compressibility. Also default setting, 25 degrees centigrade. Thermal expansion coefficient of formation porosity, 0, 1 per centigrade. Okay, so I will click OK. Now you see we are ticked for rock compressibility. And the symbol for SR4 is already good. So our data, data that we have imputed into the section, they are acceptable. Okay, at this stage, we can save the model. So we can go to File and then Save As. File and save as. And here I will save at my drive and I will call it CO2 injection. That's That will be my name for the case. Click OK. All right. And now you see we still have limits in our model. Okay. I say previously that. In I direction, we have 100 grids, right? But let's say I want to model CO2 storage in aquifer, and we know that the size of aquifer is very big. So let's say I want to make it like sort of infinite in size in I direction. How can I do that? So I will change to select. And then we will find edit properties. Okay. Here we can use this one, edit reservoir property, but I think it's not, not for this stage. So from here, we just only start the reservoir modeling by creating the grids and populating the grids with property. Okay. So from here, we will continue with the component. Okay. With the component here, we will set the fluid properties. And because this is CO2 storage issue, we will use compositional modeling and we will model the PVT. We will model the fluid using wind prop of CMG. If you go here, you will see there, wind prop. Okay, so from this video, we will continue the video with the wind prop modeling for the CO2 or the fluid properties that we will use during the simulation. Okay. So thank you and see you in the next, see you in the next video. Thank you.